I invite your attention this morning in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. Hebrews, chapter number 11. As we look at the question this morning, what pleases God? Hebrews chapter number 11, we will read there in verse number 5 and verse number 6. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Again, dear Father, we pray, thanking you for the word, asking, Lord, that you will bless the message this morning. Give the preacher the words to say, hide him behind the cross, that we may, dear Lord, be a people that please you by faith. Father, we just ask and we pray now these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Hebrews was written to Jewish believers who were being discouraged by the persecution that they were going through and they were getting ready to go back to Judaism. They had gotten so discouraged over the persecution that they went through that they were willing to give up their life as believers in Christ and go back to their old faith. Here in Hebrews chapter 11, we see the chapter known as the Hall of Faith or the Hall of Fame of Faith. In this chapter, we find many of the Old Testament, we find also here in the book of Hebrews, first of all, that Christ is shown as superior to Judaism. And it is. Christ is superior to angels. Christ is superior to the tabernacle or the temple. Christ is superior and his priesthood is superior to the priesthood of Aaron. And the writer of the book of Hebrews tried to encourage these Jews to stick by the staff, to stay by the faith. No matter what they went through in life. This is a good lesson for us today as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what we go through. Let us stick by the stuff. Let us stay by the faith. Let us hold fast our profession of faith in Jesus Christ. Because I personally believe that times will not necessarily get better. I believe they'll get worse. Because they've gotten worse. To get us to where we are now. And people are putting their faith in the wrong things or the wrong people to get us out of the mess that we're in. Because only God can get us out of the mess that we are in. And we must have faith that it, if, it, if it is God's will, he will do that. We also must have faith that if it is God's will that he not get us out of this mess, that he will get us through this mess. Until the day we go home to be with him. 
The Hall of Fame of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11, as I go back there, gives us examples of the Old Testament saints who had faith in God. And with that faith, they overcame great trials and they overcame great obstacles in their life. And we can overcome the obstacles that we face in our life by faith in God. In verse number 5, we see that, and we are introduced to a man by the name of Enoch. Enoch is first mentioned all the way back in the beginning, in the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 5, and verse number 21, through verse number 24. Enoch's name is mentioned there in a genealogy. Outside of his mentioning there and in Hebrews chapter 11 and I believe also mentioned there in the book of Jude, we don't know much about Enoch. But there's one thing we do know about Enoch. Enoch walked with God Enoch had faith. In verse 21 there of Genesis chapter 5, And Enoch lived 65 years, and he begat Methuselah. Enoch was the father of the oldest man who ever lived, Methuselah. Almost as old as Brother Jerry. <laughs> almost. Because Brother Jerry is almost as old as dirt. But not quite. I can pick on Brother Jerry because we love him. <laughs> and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah, in verse number 22, 300 years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. For God took him. As a side note, we also see here a great picture of the rapture of the Lord Jesus Christ in his church. Enoch was gone in a moment from this earth. The twinkling, if you will, of an eye. And he went home to be with God. Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. Enoch was one of two men in the Old Testament that didn't see death. The other was Elijah the prophet, caught up in that cloud, if you will, of fire. Enoch lived so close to God that God called him up to be with him. God did this because Enoch had what it took to please God. Enoch had faith. Faith in God. Above, I believe above all else. And Enoch had a faith that pleased God. So what kind of faith pleases God? Well, first we can see from the word of God that saving faith pleases God. The angels of heaven rejoice over one sinner that repenteth, the Bible says in the Gospel of Luke. And God is very pleased when a person gives their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ to begin a personal relationship with him. A walk or a life of faith. Enoch had that life. It is the same faith that Abraham had. The faith that pleased God. In the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 4, in verses 20 through 22. 
Romans chapter 4 and verse number 20. Speaking of Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. This is the faith that Enoch had. He believed God, he believed God, he believed his promises, he believed his word. And he lived by that. He walked so close to God... That God one day said, hey, Enoch, why don't you come up and be with me? That's a strong faith. That's a moving mountain faith. It is a faith that justifies us before God. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we give our heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ, we become justified by our faith in what Christ has done for us at Calvary's cross. Just as if we've never sinned. When God forgives us of our sin, He never looks at that sin again. Praise God. The Bible says He drops it into His sea of forgetfulness to remember it against us no more. He separates our iniquities and our sins as far as the east is from the west. And they never meet. If you draw a straight line. That's a great thing. Justified by our faith. But to have saving faith, you must believe, first of all, that you're not right with God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse number 10, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is not a person in this world, in their own merit, outside of Jesus Christ, that can stand before him justified. Not a one. And that includes your preacher. You must believe that you have broken God's law as a sinner. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God's standard is here. It's perfection. We will always, in our own strength and merit, fall short of that mark. We will never hit that mark on our own. Because we have broken the law of God. Because of that, we are sinners. And all of us are sinners. From the president and the pope on down to the beggar on the street and the town drunk, we are all sinners. And you must believe that sin has consequences. In the first part of Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. That is the consequence of sin. If we live in sin, we're going to die. And we're going to die in that sin. And the Bible says, if we die in our sin, we will spend a Christless eternity in hell. And you have to believe that. If you're going to be saved, if you're going to be born again, you've got to believe these things. You also have to believe that God loves you. And you have to believe that he sent his son to die and take your place at Calvary's cross. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible says, But God commendeth. He showed or demonstrated what that word commendeth means. God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you're here without Christ this morning, you have to believe 
that Jesus Christ died for you. You have to believe that God loved you enough to send his son to this earth to pay the price and the penalty of your sin. And you also must believe that God's gift of eternal life is through Jesus Christ and cannot be found anywhere else. The last part of Romans 6 and verse 23, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You must confess your sins to God and you must call upon him to save you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, I tell you, sometimes the brain does things to you. Verses you've known for decades, they're gone. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You have to do that. And when you do that, you have to believe that Christ will save you, that God will save your soul. If you confess your sins and put your faith and trust in him, you've got to believe that he will save you. He gives us the promise in verse 13 of that same chapter of Romans chapter 10, that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you have to do this by faith. Without saving faith, you cannot please God. There is no way to please God unless you are born again. There's no other way to please God. It's impossible to please God if you're not born again. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 3, ye must be born again. Again. Not only do you have to have saving faith in order to please God, but after you trust Christ as your personal Savior, and after you receive God's saving faith, you've got to have living faith. In order to please God. The Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. That word walk basically means to live. And means that in other, in other scriptures where it is used. We're to live by faith. Living by faith in Jesus above. Trusting, confiding in his great love. We are to live by faith. The faith that we profess to have in Jesus Christ. We must live by that faith. After we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are to serve Him with our lives. The Bible says in Romans 12 and verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We are not only to serve Christ, but we are to live for Christ. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20, Paul said, as he is moved by the Holy Spirit of God, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. It's not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And he goes on to say there, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The Apostle Paul's life was a life of faith. He believed God. He believed God would take care of him. He believed God would provide for him. He believed that God would take care of him in everything that he went through. And he, lived it, and he lived that life so others could see it. 
James, in the book of James, in James chapter 2 and verses 14 through 26, we'll not read those verses this morning. I hope you'll read them later for time's sake. But James, as he's moved by the Holy Spirit of God, he speaks there in, the, in that chapter, in those verses, of three different types of faith. Three different kinds of faith to live by. The first one that he mentions there is a dead faith. Basically, a dead faith is a faith that doesn't work. A person that says, I have faith in God. And a lot of people say that. Even those who have never been born again say, I have faith in God. But how do we know they have faith in God? James says there, In verse 18 of that chapter in James chapter 2, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. I will show you my faith by what I do. Enoch showed his faith by what he did and how he lived. There's also mentioned there... In verse 19, a demonic faith. You know, even Satan and his demons believe in God. And they're scared to death. They are frightened above measure. And they should be. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. This is a faith that is terrified of God. And if you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, you need to fear God, yes, but not be terrified of him. And the rest of the chapter there, James speaks about a dynamic faith. Which is a faith that works to please God. I don't do the things I do for the Lord so that I can get saved. And go to heaven one day. The Bible says I can't do that. But I do the things that I do for the Lord. Because I love him. And because of what he's done for me. James uses the example of Abraham. And Rahab. And the rest of those verses there. To show a faith that is dynamic. A faith that works. A faith that will act. And do things for the Lord. That is a faith that pleases God. A faith that is obedient to God. A faith in the a faith that believes the word of God and a faith that believes the promises of God. That's a dynamic faith. That's a faith that Enoch had. And if you don't have a faith that works. You cannot please God. That's why you need to launch out and get out of the boat. Do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Christ has done so much for you as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. (coughs) 
Retirement day doesn't come until the Lord comes to take us home. And anyone who comes to worship Him or comes to pray to the Lord, to confess their sins to the Lord, or comes to the Lord for salvation, they must have faith, according to verse 6, and believe the two things that are mentioned there. Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and he must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The first thing that we see there is we must believe that God is, that God exists. There are many today that don't believe God exists. Back in the 1960s, Time magazine had on their cover, God is dead. I think they wrote the obituary too soon. Because God is not dead. Our God lives. Larry King had a radio show that ran overnight back in the 1980s and even before. And he had a television show on that CNN place long ago before he passed away. And for the 20th anniversary of his show there, Larry King Live, Barbara Walters interviewed the man who became famous for interviewing others. She asked him direct and revealing questions. Two of the most telling responses came when she probed about fear and faith. I believe Larry King was Jewish, by the way, just to be able to give you some context there. Walters asked King, what is your greatest fear? He immediately replied, death. This interview occurred back in 2005 when he was at the very top of his career and had much to lose. But none of that mattered compared to the fear of death. Her follow-up question was, do you believe in God? King stated, not sure. I'm an agnostic. Regardless of our success or status, if you're uncertain about God, we will most assuredly be fearful of death. If you're going to come to God, you must believe that He is. You must believe that he exists. The evidence is all around us and everywhere. You must believe that God is what he is and that he is what he has revealed to us in the word of God. You must believe in God's perfect love his perfect grace, his perfect mercy, his perfect righteousness, his perfect judgment, his perfect truth, his perfect purity. You must believe that God knows all things, that God has all power, and that God is everywhere present. That's why God can be with us today at this hour and with Brother Emmanuel Bachi in Togo of West Africa at the same time. You must believe that God is one God who shows himself in three persons. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 7, 
and mentions there this trinity. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, who is Jesus Christ, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost, God the Spirit. And these three are one. One in the same. One God who shows himself in three persons. Could I explain that to you logically? Absolutely not. Can't come close. And there are greater preachers with more experience than I and more knowledge of the word of God that can't do it either. But I can tell you I believe it. Because God said it. And if you don't believe that God is, then you cannot please God. We also see that God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. We see that because of sin, we lost. We lost light, we lost life, we lost love, we lost communion with God. Because sin separates us from God. But through the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, these things can now be found again. God instructs us how he may be found again and how you can have a relationship with him. God can be found in his word and in his promises and in his teachings through the preaching and the teaching of his word by faithful ministers of the word of God. And by doing what God's word says for us to do. We can find God. We can diligently seek him. He's shown us the way to do it. For those who are lost, you can know God through Jesus Christ. By faith. For believers in Christ... We can find God by walking and living for Him. By faith. And being able to wait on the Lord in all things. As we do what God's Word says for us to do. And if you seek the Lord this way, then you need to be able to seek Him diligently. And you need to seek God early. And you need to seek God earnestly. And you need to seek God perseveringly. Don't give up. Because while you're seeking God, God is seeking you. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verses 13 and 14. Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 13 and 14. The Bible tells us there. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. And the Lord has done this in the nation of Israel. They have a homeland since 1948. And he is gathering them to... Israel and Jerusalem, even today. 
and we can seek the Lord for salvation, for help, for comfort, for strength. But we must search with all of our heart. When we seek the Lord for salvation, we must believe that He will save. Even as believers in Christ, as we go to tell others about Christ and about His great love and plant seeds of the gospel in the hearts of men and women and boys and girls, we must believe that God will save them. By faith. When we seek the Lord in our prayers and when we pray to the Lord, we must believe that He will answer our prayers. If we don't believe that, why are we praying? In Matthew chapter 21, in verse number 22, Well, let's read verse number 21. Christ had cursed a fig tree there. And that fig tree had withered away in a very short period of time. And Jesus answered and said unto them, unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do that which is done to the fig tree, but also... If ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. We must believe that when we pray to the Lord, the Lord will hear and answer our prayers according to his will. We know the Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 17 that every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, which is neither variableness nor shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. And we must believe that. God blesses us with innumerable blessings. And we must believe that by faith. In order to be able to please God, you need to have the faith of Enoch. You cannot do anything of yourself. You must believe in what God has done for you through His Son, Jesus Christ. You have to believe that by faith. And if you are, and if you are to be caught up to be with the Lord when He comes, you must put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You're here without Jesus Christ this morning. You're not ready for the Lord to come. Now's the time to get ready. Now's the time to prepare. If you're in the sound of my voice and you do not know Christ as your Savior or you have any doubts at all about it, lay those doubts to rest today. Place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If you are saved this morning, then you need to have a faith that works. You need to have a faith that obeys God. A faith that serves the Lord. You must believe that God is, and you must believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. 
You have to believe that when you launch out by faith, that the Lord will be there with you no matter what. You have to believe when you go through the storms and the trials of life that the Lord is there with you. He will help you through. He will get you through. Sometimes he'll have to pull you through. But you'll get through. You've got to believe that by faith. So you can launch out with the faith of Enoch. And if you do that, that faith will take you far. Really, really far. But you've got to decide to do that in your own life. Appreciate your time and attention this morning as we stand for our invitation.